Well, I suppose it started back in 1948 because that's when my mother left the farm at Karoo and she, she was determined to find um, something more worthwhile in life that was not offered by religions or politics or anything at all. She knew that there had to be something better and she was determined to find it. But she never really found it there. It wasn't until Fred Robinson came on the scene in 1961 <clears throat> that she found that they had the same thing in common. He talked about, he was a type of prophet sort of bloke, and talked about things to happen in the future and talked about um, creating communities where the lifestyle could be controlled. So Mum and Fred became a team and they decided to sell the place in Carlisle where Mum was and she bought a place in Armadale up in the hills, um, they called it Shalem. It had a big house with a big meeting hall and they called this um, the Shalem New Age Information Centre. And it became a focal point for, the, for many people in the city to come and uh, listen to speakers and be involved in discussions. And, and I think every Sunday there was meetings there and they talked about things like flying sources and health foods and um, all new age subjects. Fred, Fred always got going and talking about his, he had these charts he'd put up on the wall. I didn't understand a thing about them, but they were something to do with the planetary system and about yes. things that are going to happen and, and, and everyone thought that was great, but I don't know whether they really thought it was great or not. <laughs> but Mum and Fred organised a tour of, I think there was two tours, I think New Zealand was in one and I think the other was up the east coast. And um, I've got a, a, a um, there's a little pamphlet here that they, they must have circulated and it was called uh, A Lecture Tour of Australia is Planned by Fred and Mary of Shalem <clears throat> dealing with the following subjects and a meeting in your district will be held, etc. Now the subjects were the Prophet of Taboos, that's Ogamasama in Japan, Spirit Surgery in the Philippines, Dr. C. H. Yang in Malaysia, Diagrams of Revealed Knowledge, which is Fred's charts on the wall, Nutrition for the New Age, that's all about organic foods and that sort of thing, and spacecraft being alien spacecraft, flying saucers and such like. So that was the main subjects. And she said, look, I don't know what I'm going to do, but following our tour, we've got a hundred young people from the Eastern States have all landed here wanting to join the community. And we haven't got a community, we haven't got anywhere to put them. They can't all stay here on a few acres. So I said, well, I suppose I've got, I've got several properties at Crewe. I said, you could, and, and the house on one is vacant. And uh, you could all, they could all come up there and they could live there. And you could start off the community there. The sounds of gong and flute proclaim the new day in the lives of the new people. This is Karanya, home of the Karanya Brotherhood, God's gift to the people of the new age, those who are building the new order in which man will find paradise here on earth. Karanya is not all work. Here in the hot, dry sheep country, 170 miles north of Perth, the swimming pool becomes almost a necessity in summer. Team sports like volleyball are also a daily event. The participants aren't exactly what could be described as clean-cut lads and lasses, but if anything could be further from the popular conception of a hippie commune, this is it. As well as the disciplines of religion, work and sport, the Karanya Brotherhood are vegetarians and shun tobacco and alcohol. We call ourselves a brotherhood. Um, and the reason we do that is that we're not an unorganised group of people come together just because we want to escape. We want to create um, a really pure alternative society in a world where there is a tremendous amount of pollution. And anyone that knows anything knows that smoking is not uh, a step towards purity. Um, we have discovered, each of us individually, 
that meat eating is not good for us, and so we, we give that up and moved out to Karoo in the wheat belt and it was such a shock from the Armadale Hills which then were very green and lush in the orchards to this just desert and I think the, pla the name actually Karanya I think it means um, sand hills to parkland or something like that I think that's the meaning I'm not sure and um, so we started to build and um, we started building houses and putting in the orchard. We had a generator for electricity. My job was to organise things. I was the roster person. So I worked out who cooked and who cleaned and who did the windows and everything. But it was a fairly intense sort of life. It was fairly, um, it was almost monastic in its content. We used to get up early in the morning, about four o'clock, um, for yoga and meditation, and then we would go out and work dig the gardens and milk the goats and do whatever needed to be done before we ate. And um, when we ate together, Fred would always read something from the Urantia book, and that was, that was a really lovely sort of coming together. It was a real family kind of situation. But it was, it was very hard sort of physical work, and, um, but it was just the most magical experience to have um, so many people doing things together making houses, you know, cooking, singing, little children running around, schooling. Um, we homeschooled the children then. It was absolutely fantastic. The fierce determination of the Karanya brethren to live their own lives as they see fit has meant in the past that the community has largely turned inwards on itself. Contacts between Karanya and the local community have been few and on both sides there's been suspicion born of mutual ignorance. The situation could have gone on indefinitely but the Karanya Brotherhood decided to take the initiative. The first ever Karanya social evening was held in the Karnamar Town Hall. A seemingly unlikely step for a commune to take, it was an inspired piece of public relations. Sheep farmers and local townspeople flocked along. After all, who could resist the temptation to discover whether the Karanya brethren were really religious cranks, health fanatics or a pack of hippies? It's nearly five months now since I visited Karanya to compile my report for TDT. The one thing that most impressed me and became a recurring theme in that report was the sense of permanency and community at Karanya. There have been scores of attempts to establish communes in Australia, but most of them have been nine-day wonders, disintegrating in chaos due to lack of leadership or the inability of commune members to handle the peculiar pressures of communal living. But Karanya was certainly no nine-day wonder. In two years it had grown from a single couple living in an old railway goods van to a village of more than 70 men, women and children. There were many rail vans and permanent houses of mud brick and wood were being built. If anything could be further from the popular conception of a hippie commune, this was it. Instead of drug crazed dropouts using dull money to finance a year round sex orgy, I found the Karanya Brotherhood hard working, sober and industrious with the aim of eventual self-sufficiency from the outside world as their goal. 